Welcome to Keep It at 100 Oklahoma High School Sports on this Wednesday afternoon with my man Big B. Yes, Big E, we've been gone for a couple weeks, Big E. Yes, What's going on, baby? Oh, uh, not much. Just got back from a little vacation. Uh, my birthday just turned 19 last week. Uh, you 19? Know, 19. Still Big per- E, you a baby. <laughs> I know. Uh, I don't feel like it, but, you know. Hey, that, that comes a time and age, man, when you yeah. hang out an old guy like me, that old wisdom so rubbing off on you. <laughs> man, folks, man, we got a special, you know, guest tonight, man. You know, before we jump into that, you know, we're probably going to talk about a couple of things. I want to congratulation to the, uh, you know, Diamond Elite, Brad Collier, uh, Travis Finn, those guys out there winning the Teen U uh, Girls Softball Fast Pitch, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, great job on those young ladies. I know Zoe used to play with some of those girls, but they pulled it off. I know they kind of got in a loser's bracket and worked their way back. I uh, know Brad is excited, man. His daughter Molly is a great pitcher, so uh, keep your eyes on her. We're probably going to have her on the show pretty soon because you know what we do. We, we we promote everybody, don't matter what they're female, male. We just try to get them out there. Uh, another thing is uh, his brother Chris Carrier. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, Chris Carrier went out this weekend, went down to Wichita, took six girls and played in a big big uh, basketball tournament, uh, 25 teams, man. They ended up making it to the gold bracket, got beaten in the ship uh, by, you know, Kansas United, a good team, uh, lost 32 to 27. Like I said, just to take six girls down there and play, you know, with six girls in a big tournament like that, man, and some of those girls didn't get a break. And I just tell you, man, every one of those young ladies that's on the team played outstanding basketball from defense to offense to rebounding. Uh, I got to give it up to Hayden, uh, you know, Mayfield, uh, dad's the head coach out there at, at uh, Calumet, man, this young lady. I mean, I'm just telling you, in that semifinals game, uh, against the team that won Nationals last year. We didn't beat them by yep. 15 points, Big E. And I tell you, that girl had a double-double play. You know, 25 <laughs> points, you know, 30, between 25 to 30 rebounds. Played lights out, though. So, uh, I'd awesome. like, like to give it up to them, man. You know, anytime yeah. a young lady can go out there, you know, I want to give those young ladies the, Absolutely. the uh, yeah. you know, the, the props they need. But, folks, like tonight we have a – this afternoon, I'm saying, I'm calling it night afternoon. I'm on vacation this week. But uh, we have a special guest, you know, Charles Thompson, uh, probably one of the best option quarterbacks that ever came that played the game of college football, folks. And, I mean, the guys did some amazing things when he was at OU and then have, you know, two sons that's, you know, has played college ball. So we'll get a chance to talk to him and see what it's all about, you know, being at OU and, you know, being the father that he is of three yeah. sons. And, you know, and one of his sons got a chance to play in the NFL and the other one will be the starting quarterback for Texas, man. Uh, you got to be tickled, man. I know it probably burns a little bit, him being a Sooner and the son being a Longhorn. But I guess, you know, <laughs> no matter where your baby's at, you're going to cheer for him and su- support him no matter what. But, folks, we'll be back with Charles Thompson right after one of our what? After one of our sponsors. We'll be right back. Keep it at 100 Oklahoma, Oklahoma High, High School, School Sports. Sports. With 25 years experience in the industry, Linex Customs OKC is your one-stop shop for all your vehicle accessory needs. Specializing in spray-in liners, lifts, levels, wheels, tires, bed covers, and anything else you need to make your ride look and sound better. Call Eric and the boys at 405-778-8878. Welcome back to Keeping It 100, Oklahoma High School Sports. Like I said, on this Wednesday afternoon, my man, Big E. Uh, folks, we are privileged to have this, this I'm going to call him a legend of all time, man. Youth youth football, uh, you know, high school, college, whatever, man. I mean, the guy knows so much about football more than I know. He, I forgot he knows, so it's crazy. But we are special to have our main man on tonight, Charles Thompson. What's up, C.T.? Man, Tony, I appreciate you guys having me on with you, man. It's it's uh it's good to be on just talking sports. Got it. You got to appreciate the fact that number one, we're with everything that's going on the last year with COVID, that we still got sports going on. We still got something to talk about. Man, yeah. CT, I mean, you 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 uh, go ahead. See, I'm sorry. Oh no, I was just agreeing with him. Go ahead. I mean, that, I mean, you're exactly right, man. It's so funny, Charles. Me a year ago this time, man. You know, everybody was wearing a mask, and now it seemed like we never had COVID. COVID never existed. So <laughs> it's just so funny how to how it's changed in the last. 
you know, year or so that everything is open, camps and all this stuff. And I know you're a guy that does, you know, FBU, and we'll get into that. But, you know, just to see what's going on in the world today, man, like you said, we are blessed and to have – this stuff get taken care of. People getting to doing the right things, getting the shots, or do what they need to do to get it. You know, get this taken care of. So to bring sports back, and sports is a big part of our world. You know that everybody knows that, man. Everybody get a chance to watch a game. They're excited. So CT for the listeners that don't know about you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, man, listen, Tony. As you mentioned, I, I just uh, just an old Oklahoma kid that grew up in Lawton, Oklahoma. Uh, you know, all my life. You know, I've been sitting around sports and dreamed of maybe someday being a a football player at the University of Oklahoma. I started watching my first OU football game when I was six years old, and I remember watching Steve Davis was the Oklahoma quarterback at that time. And I think, I'll never forget, it was a two-yard touchdown dive over the top, him playing quarterback. And then, of course, I fell in love with the Sooners uh, a couple of years, even after that, Thomas Lott, who wore number six in the bandana, uh, <laughs> when I when I saw switch to those guys. That's the reason why I wore number six at OU yes, sir. was because of him. But um, – just been a, just a kid that grew up in Lawton, Oklahoma, man, I always dreamed of being on the big stage of uh, the University of Oklahoma. And, you know, fortunate for me that I got an opportunity to live out that dream, and it was a great time. Uh, a lot of things happened, both good and bad, through that time. But for me, uh, I just feel blessed that I was given that opportunity to sort of live out a childhood dream of mine to have the opportunity to play on the stages uh, in the games that I got to play at during my time at the University of Oklahoma. But that's cool, Charles. Since then, t- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Since then, TD, as you know, I mean, I, since then, I've, I've gone on to play pro ball. Uh, Canadian Football League, uh, been to the NFL Europe, uh, been in two NFL training camps. Unfortunately, wasn't able to really make a long-lasting career there. And then I came back after having my oldest son, Kendall, and, and got involved in really baseball first. Baseball, Tony, a lot of people don't know, baseball was my second love. Got drafted out of high school to play baseball uh, by the Cincinnati Reds. And, and uh, I always thought baseball would be where I would end up. But I always had a love for, of course, uh, football and, and uh now, obviously, when I got the opportunity to play for Coach Barry Switzer, who, ironic enough, I was at a camp this past week, and Switzer calls me out of the blue, and there's a kid at the camp that he's a godson uh, of. And, and, uh, uh, and you know, uh, I just just the relationships that I've built through the years with, with people like Switzer and some of the guys that I play with, uh, both as teammates and some as coaches, uh, it just, man, it's football has provided for me a life that I really just can't – I can't say enough for God thanking me. I mean, just blessing me enough to have the opportunity to – to know what I know, experience what I experience, both on the field and off, and that's allowed me to be a, a man that I am today to my own kids. And as you know, for many of the other kids that I've been involved in our youth activity and our youth programs there at Woodson Park. Well, CT, I mean, that's amazing. I mean, like you said, coming out a lot, you know, me being a Memphis City bomber, I know uh, Memphis used to have fits with you trying to, you know, cur- you know, you know, stop you. And the, the but, I, but I never I never beat y'all, Tony. I never <laughs> beat the bombers. I, I tell you, for me, and listen, not to interrupt, Tony. For me, I know all this Jinx and Union stuff is going on now. But, man, back then, Midwest City was the, the, the stuff. I mean, they were the team to beat. I remember watching my brother play against you guys in the in the in the in eighty and eighty one, eighty two, and they always had trouble with with, with Midwest City. And of course, when I got to high school, um, I had a fit. Obviously, played two years against Mike Gundy. Never beat him in high school. I was fortunate enough to when he went to Oklahoma State. I did did get a chance to be on the victory side when we played the uh, Oklahoma State while we were, while we were in college. But I never could beat the Bombers, and it just to this day. I still, I still kind of get a little bit upset when I think about it. So. <laughs> well, that black and gold goes strong, man. You know, uh, I, fortunately, I wore those colors, man, and hopefully my baby girl's going to wear those colors, man. I'm trying to, you know, she kind of came to me. It's funny because bo- both of her brothers went to Chata, and then, you know, one day uh, she she started following a young lady that plays for uh, Midwest City in basketball, and then she just kind of came to me and my wife one day, and she said, hey, I, I want to be a bomber. And, you know, I got tickled inside. I was like, hey, that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. I'm going to support your dream. And it's funny, you know, because nowadays, you know, these kids are 9, 10 years, 11 years old, and they got this TikTok and Twitter and, and, and Instagram and all that stuff. So they see what everything that's going on. You know, when we and you was in school, Charles, we didn't have all that stuff. We got recruited by VH1, VHH1 tapes, you know. We would send it a word of mouth. Hey, this kid is good. So, I mean, think about how good your recruiting would have been if you would have had, you know, Twitter and, and, and Instagram. But, Charles, you know, before we jump in all this stuff, so, you know, like you said, you played at OU. You, you kind of played with Jamel Holloway. Tell us a little bit about your experience because, like I said, you know, you did have a bumpy road, and, 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 and you turn out the man that you are now today, man, you know, turn it over to the Lord and doing the things that you've done. You know, kind of tell the listeners that didn't know, you know, what kind of happened at OU and, you know, what set you free well, yeah. and what made you a better man. 
Well, if Tony, I'll, Tony, I'll real quick before I get into that, you you'd say VHS? No, mine was eight millimeter, real to real stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so so hey, I I burnt up a few real to real tapes watching the playback and stuff. Anyway, yeah, that's how my so I'm a little bit further back than you, Tony. I can tell you that right now. Oh, that's but anyway, no, just listen, I listen, man. You know, I, obviously, you know, my experience at Universal, I, I really people ask me all the time, guys. And, and I, I heard your co-host is 19, 19 years 19 old. Years wow. Old. Yeah, he's, he's doing his thing. I mean, yeah. I just, whoa, I wish I could have those years back again, for sure. <laughs> tell me, tell that's me about when it. I, that's when I was down in Norman. But listen, I can't really put the words. People ask me all the time, like, what did it feel like living out a dream of, you know, at six years old, guys, I, I dreamed and I used to go out uh, on Saturday afternoons after OU played and I would walk out across the street. We had this park and I would take a white T-shirt I put the number six on this white T-shirt, and I go across the street. And back then, Tony, that's when everyone kind of played neighborhood football. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This neighborhood versus that neighborhood, and man, I would just dream of being a player for the University of Oklahoma, Coach Barry Switzer. So, I really can't put the words when I, people ask me what it felt like to finally live that dream out. And you know, for for uh, for me, it was obviously the Bedlam game was important as a kid growing up. The uh, the Cotton Bowl was certainly one that we watched, and the one that was the the big deal of all things for me was the Nebraska OU Nebraska game, Ooh, which game always back then took place on thir- on Thanksgiving weekend, yes, and sir. watching those oranges go down to get a chance to be a part of that history. I, if it's, I, I don't even know how to explain it to you. It all kind of seems surreal still, and when I think back on it, it seems like a separate life because it was so so many years ago. But man, I can't even explain to you what it's like to walk down the ramp in the Cotton Bowl and you got, you're got you a player about to be a part of that, that Red River rival with half cr- uh, crimson and half burnt orange and, and to see that, uh, to be a part of uh, you know, winning that game, uh, to be a part of the Orange Bowl, the right to go play for the, I mean, the, excuse me, the Big A championship game against Nebraska for the right to go play in the Orange Bowl for the national ch- championship. You know, I just, man, it's, it was like a dream come true for me. Some of the best experiences I've had uh, in, in my entire life and you know, that all came crumbling down on me, obviously, for some poor decisions I made off the field. And that's why I do you know, a lot of preaching and, and teaching and talking uh, about life off the football field, no matter how successful you are. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, football is only a small part of who you are and what you'll do in your life, whether you go on to play professional or not. So I, I had a downfall and got in trouble, uh, got arrested and spent some time. And obviously, the, the most infamous a picture that people remember about that incident is to me being on the cover Sports of Sports Illustrated. Illustrated. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, but you know, Tony, I don't run from that. I, I never have. I, 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 it's been a platform for me. I've been flown all over the country, major universities. Been been flown to several bowl events in the past. Uh, being connected with SCA when I when I turned my life over to Christ and decided, you know, wanted to be a better man, to be a better father, to be a better example. It God opened up doors, allowed me to get an opportunity to go give that testimony all over the country. And I like to say that I've, I've been blessed enough to be able to pour my experiences in some other people. And as I told them, if it's just one thing that I say that'll help you not go the same direction, then that's why I was here at that moment just to speak. And I feel the same way about this opportunity you guys are giving me on the radio today. No, I really appreciate that because, like you said, that's the thing about these young men and women when they go off to these colleges, man, they think they're untouchable. And, and, and you saw that, man. You was on top of the world. You win a national championship. Then you get in trouble, man. I mean, think about it, Charles. You was there with Jamel Holloway. Two of the best option quarterbacks that ever played the game. I know Big E's probably like, what's option? Option, what? He, he, uh, hey, man, he, hey, man. I'm a little bit of a fo- <laughs> well, football historian. I go back and I look at that stuff. Okay, on, okay. Man. Well, 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 well basically, basically, it's the zone read from under the center. That's yeah, all you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm just saying, CT, to see you and Char- uh, Jer- Jamel Holloway at the same time, man, and, you know, and, you know, it's kind of read back and, and, and listen to some of the things that went on back in the day. Because, you know, you, man, it was it was it was a, it was a wild house, Charles. I mean, you had Jamel over there in a, in a, in a, in a fur leather coat, you know, and, a, and people thinking, how the hell that young man can afford? You know how it is, though, man. Poor Switcher, well, man. Well, listen. Talk to listen, me, baby. Tony, talk to man, me. I, I, I can't, I, listen, listen, back then, I, I will tell you, you know, on the weekends, and people say I, I, I can't exaggerate. I don't make up stories. I, obviously, you guys. You know, I've written a book about things that have gone on in Oklahoma. But, listen, at 18, 19 years old, Tony, I, I was riding around in limos every other weekend. Uh, you know, the same fur coat you saw Jamel in, I had a matching one. Yes, sir. You know, the thing, <laughs> it, it's a, it was just a different deal. And, you know, that's back in Oklahoma, to be honest with you. During the early mid to early 80s, it was the oil boom was up. So there was a lot of money flowing 
through our economy and people were, you know, I mean, the students were winning. Uh, my senior in high school, they played for the national championship. Both years that I was there, we were ranked number one or two in the country. So for Oklahoma at that time, being an OU football player, I mean, you were able to go around not only just in Norman, but in Oklahoma City and pretty much all of Oklahoma and kind of feel like that we were then the professional athletes of the state of Oklahoma because we had had no NBA. We had nothing else. And no. Oklahoma was really, in my opinion, was uh, – and, and, of course, some of the people argue. I still think it's one of the proudest uh, things that most people from Oklahoma, when they go other places, they always boast their chest out and beat it out talking about the Oklahoma Sooners program. And we, I was a part of that at that time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I mean, like, well, I mean, so what was it like, you know, being on that team, being coached by Switzer? Who recruited you? Who who's, who came in the house and say, "CT, we want you to Charles Thompson, we want you to come to University of Oklahoma." What other schools was in, was involved with you trying to get you to come? Cause, you know, Colorado ran the ran the option too, but like, what school was? I mean, like you said, I know you were set on OU, but who else tried to come in the back door OU to try to get you to come to the univer? I mean, to their university. Well, it, you know, uh, uh, but to be honest with you, there was only a few schools that was really recruiting me as a quarterback. I, I came out of, uh, obviously, uh, at a time, think about it, at Oklahoma, there was Mike Gundy, myself, and Quinn Grovey. Uh, Quinn Grovey was out of Duncan. He ended up going to Arkansas. Mike Gundy ended up going to Oklahoma State. I ended up going to OU. We all graduated in the same year and started for our respective colleges. So I had more schools at the time kind of recruiting me uh, as a defensive back. In fact, Oklahoma – partially recruited me as a defensive back. They also wanted me as a quarterback, but I had SMUs. I had, the, at the time, Minnesota was recruiting me. Lou Hulse had di- taken the job at Notre Dame right in the middle of my recruitment, and he offered me at Notre Dame. But I had more offers, believe it or not, a, 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 as a as a defensive back, uh, maybe 15 or 20 of those, uh, more so than I did the four or five that I had as a quarterback. But it was very simple. It didn't really matter to me. What OU wanted me as, when they offered me, I was pretty much already going to be theirs. In fact, I, I cost myself money, Tony, in the, in, in, the, in the Major League Baseball draft because I wouldn't tell teams that if they drafted me, I would put baseball over football. Yes, I couldn't sir. lie to them. You know, one thing my father told me, don't lie, I was be honest. And I said, hey, listen, I love to get drafted, and I love baseball. But I got a chance to live out my dream. I'm going to go to the University of Oklahoma, and I'm going to pursue baseball. And it's, I mean, football. At the time, what they did was I was partially sort of given the opportunity by Switzer and Enos Seymour to do both. And back then, it was kind of a rarity deal. Uh, ultimately, I never did get a chance to do it. Jamel broke his hand or his, his hand in spring, and they came and pulled me off the baseball diamond and pulled me back football full time. And it, it's probably one of the best decisions in my life, but it was sort of my last day of playing baseball uh, happened uh, on my, my freshman year at University of Oklahoma in the spring. And the, uh, the rest is history. But, you know, listen, guys, it, 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 it's um, it's a whole different realm of things, Tony, when you get there. And people can tell you all these different things. Coach Barry Switzer and Bobby Proctor are the ones that recruited me. I'll tell you a quick story. Barry Switzer shows up at my unit, at my high school in the middle of lunchtime. And instead of coming in the back where he, I was waiting in the coach's office, he pulls up in the front. Now, by this time, we're all the schools breaking for lunch. Guys, he pulls up in the front of the school in the limousine. <laughs> he gets out of the limousine in the fur coat, Tony. Okay, okay. He everybody, walks. everybody know you had a fur coat. It, 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 it was summertime. Well, <laughs> hey, I want to. T- I can't tell you where I got mine from. <laughs> but, but but he walks down the hallways. And he's at this time we're all a uh, school's break for lunch, and everybody knows who Coach Switzer is. Like I mean, it's, it's a god around there even then. And he's around there asking kids, "You seen that Charlie Thompson? If you do, you better go tell him. He better choose Universal Oklahoma." He's working the kids. I love it. I love it. So by the time he gets to me, I'm in the coach's office, and I see the whole hallway. Everybody staring because now they're walking in front of him. And two story, there's about five or six kids. You better choose Universal Oklahoma. Switzer walks into the thing coach's office sits down on the chair right in front of me and he's got all these championship rings on his fingers all five of them and he says charlie where are you gonna go where well, you can go play for stuff like this each and every year well you know you want to be a student come on be a sooner and i mean i that that's kind of for me that's really what i mean listen i, I it, it wasn't a hard recruitment of me man i i was i was locked loaded and ready to do anything i could to be a university of Oklahoma football player and so 
I, I like I said, I just feel blessed that, that God gave me an opportunity to live out that dream. That's some good stuff, man. That's some good stuff, though, man. Uh, that, that, I mean, that's just amazing, you know what I mean? Because, you know, nowadays, like you said, we're not getting recruited like that. It's not the coach is not. They're, they're doing stuff over over the Internet, man. I mean, I saw a kid yesterday, man. I, I, I mean, it's, and I don't, you know, what I do here, I keep a 100 Oklahoma High School sports. We keep a 100 me and Big E. And I seen a kid getting off yesterday. I only think it's played a high school down. He went to a camp. So, I don't know if these kids should really even go to a Go to play for high school football. Just go to a camp and, and show out the camp and, and and save your body because why why go get beat up thirty some high school games and you can go to a camp one weekend and show out and they recruit you and, and guess what you saving your body CT why I mean, why even go I mean that's where it got to the point now it's not even football it's, it's, it's become more of a business more of a, a social media than anything you know because we love the game and we like you said I remember those days going out there putting a number on your white t-shirt, you know, and, and I remember me wearing a headband trying to be like Charles Thompson and be like Jamel Holloway when I came to Jarman Junior High. I wanted to be a quarterback, even though my dream didn't last long. I got to play a little bit, but, you know, I got into high school. I went to Middle City, you know, you had Kel Gunn, you had A.J. Hitch, and you had, you know, Jeremy Woods. So uh, those guys wasn't running the option back then. You know, I got to do a little bit in junior right. high. But I'm saying, you know, nowadays it's changed so much, you know, and I know you're involved with a lot of other different things, you know. I know we he got a couple questions for you. Yeah, uh, you know, you know, you were up there getting recruited back in the eighties, and then one of your son or your sons are getting recruited just not too long ago. You know, talk about the difference of, of you know, recruiting back then to the recruiting process with your son. Well, listen, I, it's it's guys. That's a great question, a great point. Both you bring up. Let, let me let me. The best I can tell you is this. Here's the deal, Tony. Because you brought up scenario when you talk about marketing, the kid getting offered. You bring up scenario e, when you talk about the difference in recruiting. It, it's totally different when I came out. Listen, there was no internet such thing. I met half of my players that I saw that I was going to be teammate with came out in the Sooner Illustrated. It was a magazine. Yes. And I got to see it then, and you saw that. And I remember seeing guys in there, and, and so I didn't know anything about them and then see them. Uh, until we got the first day of camp or, or the first day we checked in the, the dormitories. And, and, and back then, you didn't go in June. We went there in, all, in, in the end of July, two weeks before the regular – the veteran guys came. Yes, sir. So recruiting is totally different than what it was now. Listen, it's changed from my oldest son, Kendall, coming out in the early 2011-12 uh, area to, to what it is today. Here, here's what it is. I learned something a long time ago, and you'll, you'll, you'll resonate with this name, uh, uh, Tony, because he went to your school uh, as a kid that I coached uh, in Little League football, Timmy Flanders. Yes, and yes, yes. So Timmy Flanders came out. Listen, I thought Timmy – which I, Timmy Flanders was one of the best athletes I've coached in any sport, baseball, basketball, and football. I mean, you name it. But, but when he came out of high school in Midwest City, I kept asking him, why isn't he getting as much love ranking-wise – as as David Oku at the time, and this was a guy kid that was out of that was out, out of Carl Albert, but everyone had him high on this list, and he was four or five star. Timmy wasn't getting that much love, but when you watch the games, Timmy was like running circles around people, like like what's the deal? And I'll never be sitting when Timmy and Midwest City play sophomore, my son beat us beat them like they stole. So I ain't never scored. I went down the field and I asked one of the uh, recruiting guys. I think it might have been for rivals, and I said. Explain to me why Timmy Flanner's in higher rank. And here's what he taught me at that time. Helped me with my son, and that's what I tell people all the time. It is about marketing, Tony. It is about putting yourself out there. Yes, Just like in business, what you guys do in your podcast is the same thing you got to do if you got a child out there. You got to give it mo the more impression you put it in front of people, the more familiar they come with the product, and the more easier they feel like they know it. And they're willing to offer it. So that's why you got kids now before they play a high school game because they've been out there seeing video. They've been out there seeing them in several set events. They've come to their camps. When Back when I came out, and what you probably you came out, Tony, people didn't go to camps when they were in the eighth grade. No. They, they went when they were in high school. So coaches and people are getting early impressions on. So I tell people, parents all the time, yes, you got to market your kid. And this is something that he taught me that I, that I figured out with my own son. He told me, he said, David Oku promotes himself. I said, what do you mean by that? He says, if David Oku gets a letter from Purdue, he puts it out there. Indiana, he'll call the he'll call up the rivals guy in Oklahoma and say, Hey, who covers who covers the who's the rival guy in Indiana? 
the rival's guy tell him, he'll call up the rival's guy in the end and say, I just got a letter from Purdue. You want to do a story on me? Well, what happens, Tony? The guy says, sure, because he wants to bring content to his readership. Yes, so he does a story on Nick McCoo. What happens is it turns that David O'Coo name into a name that's buzzing, and it becomes a national recruit. Because what happens in every conference, if Purdue is offering someone, then Indiana's going to look. Yes, sir. If Ohio State, yeah. if Ohio State offers someone, Michigan's going to look. So here's what I did with my old son Kendall. We divided the the, the, the conference uh, of the of the of the state up in conferences. At the time, Florida was big. Urban Meyer was then was winning championship down in Florida. Mm-hmm. You had Stanford on the West Coast who was hot because that's where, where where Jim Harbaugh was, and of course you still had Oklahoma here. So we decided to take a camp in Florida. We went to a University of Florida camp. We went to a Stanford camp. And I did the exact same thing that David Oku, the guy taught me, David Oku. And I called those guys and said, hey, we're, come, we're from Oklahoma. We're going to be coming to a camp out in Florida. Now, the only thing that it really did, my kids still had to go perform, but it got that person to maybe remember Kendall's name. Mm-hmm. And when we got to the camp, he watched a little bit more of what he was doing yes, sir. and wrote about it a little bit more, and therefore it created a buzz. And so it, that, I tell parents, if they want to help re- get their kid out there, you got to strategically come up with a plan and then execute that plan. And every every kid's different. Tony, every kid's different. And, and it don't have to just be the big schools. I tell kids and parents all the time, you might go out to the, the – the, you might pick 10 smaller schools – in a spectrum where you want to go and go take unofficial visits. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm kind of saying that with the top top quarterback. You know, he's kind of been on the road like a tour. You know, he's been. In, you know, he was at Louisville, Oklahoma State, Baylor, and you know, he's one of. I guess he came out today as what the top what. Uh, he was either the top quarterback in the state or the top quarterback in the 2023 class in the yeah. state. One of those two. And, and, and you know, and this, I mean, this. Well, he's, he, I mean, this he's young, definitely that. Yeah, I mean, this young man's a he's pretty good quarterback. Was. You know, good sized young yeah. man. I mean, yeah, you watched him. We watched him in the state championship last year. We sat in the stands and watched him. You know, I'm, you know, you look at the kid, man, and, and you look at some of the other kids around because, like you said, what his parents are doing, they're promoting him. You know, they've been promoting him since day one. You know, since his eighth grade, and I've learned that with my own. I know. I got my baby girl on my Twitter account, and every time she does something, I, I put it out there because I want people to know. I didn't do that with my boy CT, so it's something I've learned. You know, like you said, you got educated on it. Now we're educating somebody that's going to watch this podcast, folks. We want y'all to send us a bill, send us some money because we telling you what to do to get your baby recruited. So send us some money. But, 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 but I'm just Tony, <laughs> Tony, Tony, and E. Here's the nugget that they a lot of people miss out on, though. The goal is to be recruited. And the earlier, this element right here that people miss, the earlier you can do this, the earlier you can get your child NCA clearinghouse mm. prepared. Now, obviously, there won't be, you won't, have, you won't have taken all the high school courses, but the assumption is if you can get if you can get an ATC score or whatever on the books early, the assumption is that's going to be you're going to pass the grades. Yes, sir. So I tell people all the time, man, go take that ACT as early as you can and as often as you can. Try to get yourself a score that eases the mind of these college coaches, whether you're in the ninth grade or tenth grade, saying, I've already got that box checked off. That makes you more accessible. That makes you more recruitable. Talent is going to be a big part of it. Yes, that right. academic side is going to be the biggest, especially early on. Well, I, I think, you know, this COVID has helped a lot of kids get in because some of the kids that probably wouldn't have got in from taking the ACT, you know, got a chance to get that free pass. So now with everything being open, I mean, you'll see some kids, you know, not get that. And, and recruiting is funny, though, man, because and, – and you, well, as you know, because like I said, both of your boys are QBs. And, you know, QB is a tough spot because one thing about being a QB, there's only one QB. Yep. A DB, I mean, you, you might have, you know, four or five DBs that are going to play in the game because of the nickel package. It depends on what they're throwing out. But a QB, there's only one. And your older son, like I said, he, you know, he went to OU. They ended up leaving and going to Utah. And it worked out good for him because he ended up going to the NFL and having a chance to play with the Washington Redskins. But, you know, you went through that, you know, him being at OU, uh, you know, I think that, that that OSU game, he ended up winning that OSU game for those guys, you know. So yeah. it's it's been a it's been an up-and-down ride for you. Now your, your baby boy, you know, uh, Casey, you know, he's at Texas. And so what's it like you being a Sooner, your son being a Sooner, slash Sooner, slash Utah, now your, your, your Casey's a, a, a Longhorn. So what colors do you wear? <laughs> well, so so guys, it, it, here's the deal. When when Kendall went to Oklahoma, he obviously wanted to go there. And listen, we had a great 
experience. There. But it was tough on us and our, it being here that, you know, he had to live up, try to live up to the expectation of following me. And yes, then he sir. wasn't playing and had to be around in the community. And people said, oh, this or that reason. And it, it really kind of wasn't a, a pleasant time for us. It was more stressful a, as a family, just dealing with all that. And th- that really had indirectly probably didn't have any, any per se uh, reason why Casey chose Texas. But what I did do with Casey when he came around, I didn't want to push him anywhere. I said, what we're going to do is we're going to strip the colors off of every school. Yes, sir. So what we did, what we did with every school, Tony, we, we created a matrix. And I, I recommend parents do this. You've got to, first, number one, you got to get the kid down and say, here are the needs that I have that are important to me. Here are the needs that my family has that are important to us. And come up with a top 10 list. And then you go through a one to 10 matrix. And then you put in there. Every, every school that's interested to you, whether it's distance important, academics, position, depth of position, style of offense, is the, is an offensive-minded head coach, all these things are factors. Is it a traditional football powerhouse, whether they're winning now or not, all these things. that. So we came up with a top ten list. So what happened was Texas, before we knew, talked about the colors, they had a lot of things in their favor. And I tell people, if the – the, the 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 numbers match up when I say the numbers the business side of it match up with what your heart and their conversations match up then obviously you got to put them at top of list so that's how he ended up going to Texas because Tom Herman was at Houston as a head coach and they started recruiting him early really early on his eighth and ninth grade year uh Ohio State where Herman had left Tim Beck was the offense coordinator after Herman left they started recruiting him Really, before Oklahoma kind of got heavy, Ohio State was on him first. Well, then those two, when Herman got hired at Texas, he hired the offensive coordinator from Ohio State, and they both came to Texas. And because they've already had an ongoing relationship with him, I decided, hey, let's go down and take a look at Texas. I've never looked at it. And uh, ultimately, at the time, they had two scholarship quarterbacks, Shane Bruchel and Sam Ellinger. They didn't really know if either one of them was really going to fit Herman's style. And so they said perhaps at the time that whoever they offered and got in on 2018 would made the future of their position. Mm-hmm. And um, obviously Sam ended up being that. And so ultimately that's why we chose Texas because we thought the opportunity was there to play. I didn't really at the time, guys, it wasn't – to me it didn't matter if it was Texas, Oklahoma State. It was now – I had to take my heart out of it and do what I thought was best for my kid. And I learned that when I my son Kendall decided to transfer and leave – uh, Oklahoma, that was harder for me than really Casey picking Texas in the beginning. So it was just ultimately <laughs> the, best, the best fit for him. And it does feel, it did feel a little weird, guys, in the beginning, him being in the Longhorn uh, down there. Uh, but you're right, uh, Tony. Man, blood's always sticking in water, and I'm going to be for my son That's 100% it. of the time. That's keeping it 100. <laughs> That's what we like. Yeah, right? like, yeah. like, so once, once he's done at Texas, I'll go back to hating them. But right now, I'm <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, so with Casey, you know, um, last year he comes out and plays in the Alamo Bowl. He does really good, uh, you know, had a, has a lot of high eyes on him, uh, got a lot of hype coming into this season. Um, you know, and then you got – and then after that, Tom Herman leaves and they, breathe in, they bring in Steve Sarkeesian. So how is Casey feeling about the new system there? You know, I'm sure you've been talking with him. You know, so how's he, how's he feeling going into the season, learn, having to learn a new system and everything like that? Well, this will be Casey's third system learning. You remember when <laughs> uh, I'll be quite honest, like he was first recruited by Tim Beck and Tom Herman. Yeah. Tom Herman, Tim Beck gets fired. They bring in last year Mike Yusick. You guys remember he was at Oklahoma State and yeah, was yeah. at Ohio yeah. State. Yes, sir. So he had he had to learn, he had to learn a new offense somewhat last year too. And this is the third version. They're all similar principles. I think Sark's offense is a little bit more intrusive in the motion area, and he's just really – I mean, it, it's – Tony, you know this. You can have the same plays and run them the same, but it's how the person calling them. Calling them. That's yeah. it. They're all it makes the same, it yeah. Similar, similar. It's all the same. Like, they've got some of the same plays. It might be called differently, but it's the same uh, theory and, and philosophy behind it. Um, it, it. Listen, the toughest time for Casey doing all this – 
He always thought that he was better than Sam Hill. I'm just gonna that's, be, that's what I was gonna ask you, CT. I was gonna ask you that. Keeping it one, keeping it one hundred. Say that one more time. Saying. Say that one more time, CT. Keeping it, keeping it one hundred. I love it. I love it. I love it. He always thought that he was better than Sam, even last year. Yes, sir. But yeah. what I, he went in the transfer portal, and I told him this. I said, Casey, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to be brutally honest with you. You ain't the first cat that had to wait. No. You, you. This, this is not new to you. I had to wait. There's a lot of other famous people. Kyler Murray had to wait. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yep. And uh, Baker it. Mayfield had to work. Yes, sir. Wait. Cam, Cam Newton had to wait. People yes, don't sir. know. Keep talking. Cam Keep Newton talking. Had, you preach it now. Florida behind Tim Tebow and had to go to Blinn Junior College because he got in trouble and then by way went to Auburn. I said, so you're not the first person to have to sit and wait. You're, it's not your time. So we, you know, he was reluctant, but he listened to that. So I've been there, went back to Texas, and I said, Every issue that you had, he wasn't real fond of the Beck offense. He liked Coach Beck, but I was going to school with Beck gets fired. He still had a little bit of an issue with Herman and the not the, the character of Herman. Well, guess what happened? Like you said, Herman gets fired. So now we're in a situation. He gets an opportunity last year at the Alamo Bowl, and I kept telling him, man, you're just one play away. But if you sit here and pout about it and don't prepare yourself, because the opportunity is going to come. You're not going to do good when the opportunity comes. And I, I'm thankful, and he listened, and he kept himself grinding and working hard. And listen, that, that performance at the Alamo Bowl, I mean, to me, guys, I told him, I said, Casey, God has a way of doing things for you, boss. Yes, sir. That couldn't couldn't have done it on a bigger stage at a bigger time, opening the door to what I think could be a bright future for him. Yes, sir. Because now he's got a brand-new start. He's got a brand-new – the guy who's considered to be, along with Lincoln Raleigh, Perhaps one of the one of the the, the best offensive minds currently yes, around in college football, Steve Sarkeesian, and now Casey has a chance and opportunity to be a quarterback for three years for him I mean, yeah. for three years if he three needs years. It. That's that's good stuff right there. That's good stuff. You know, CT man. I mean, you've been blessed, like you said. Your older son, like I said, he went to OU, then he went to Utah, and he got a chance to shine on you know ESPN in Utah. I think he brought him back, and I don't know what game it was. It might have been against Utah State, U- UCLA game, or UCLA, UCLA game. I remember watching that game on a, on a Saturday night. You know, they played them games late, and he ends up going to the NFL, playing a little bit for the what? Did he get drafted by the Washington Redskins, or did he get drafted by the? No, Kennedy? he was he was he was he was he was free agent. Went to the Redskins there, spent some time there, and then also spent some time with the with the Rams. Okay. And so, you know, he, he did that, you know, and I know now he's kind of right now being a father. So what was his experience like being in the NFL? Because you, if you, one thing I want us to do, I want us to educate these young minded young men that think, and you know, you play college ball. You see so many of these guys that go to college and, and they think they're going to be there for six, seven years trying to get in the NFL, trying to get in the NFL. Well, sometimes you got to pack it up and get start your real life. So that's what I'm saying. You know, your son has done that. You know, one of your, your older son has done that. He's went, he's played. Now he's, he's, he's in the real world. So, you know, what, tell us what is it like, you know, him making that decision to say, Hey man, dad, it's time for me to go and be a father. Well, listen, I, I I had always told my kids, it goes back to this, Tony. Robert Smith, I don't know if you remember, Robert Smith was running back in the NFL, came out of Ohio State yes. with the Minnesota Vikings. He and I, I was in Central State in Ohio, and I got to hang around a lot of Ohio State guys. And so I got to meet him and be around him, and so I had a fairly decent relationship with him. And so if you remember, he kind of did the Barry Sanders deal, retired early from football. And I, I, I just never – but what a lot of people don't remember – he also at Ohio State, he was being tapped to, get, to, to to be a Heisman candidate. Well, he took a year off for academics, and he he always taught me something that I respect and told my kids that I this is why I raised them to be the way they are. Everybody is going to have to deal with life after football. It doesn't matter how long you play it. So the sooner you can get a plan together to understand that that football in the NFL really stands for not for long. That's it. If you yeah. play, if you play on an average of the average NFL lifespan is three to four years, well, hopefully most people are out there, including myself and other people, you plan on being living longer than that. So whether you play, make it to the NFL or not, you're not going to be there the whole time. So you got to at some point plan for something after. And he's always been a kid that's been about his academics. He graduated in three years uh, from the University of Oklahoma. So at Utah, he was able to start his master's. I will say that Casey graduated from Texas just a month ago. 
So now he's got three years of college left, and he's going to get his master's degree paid for by the University of Texas. I've always told him, tried to get my kids to understand, use the system. Don't allow the system just to use you. Thank you. We preach that all the time, don't we, Big E? We yes, preach sir. that all yep. the time on this show. Prepare for the future. So for him, he's been fortunate enough. God's blessed Kate Kendall. Man, he's, listen, he ended up playing. He caught one ball in his college life ever as a receiver, Tony. <laughs> He got picked up by the Redskins and the Rams as a receiver. Let me back up. He only, in his career in the NFL, he's never played in an active football game. But yet he caught two touchdown passes in preseason, and those two passes have given him a three-year career in the National Football League where he's made over a million dollars. That's it. That's it. Okay? That's how you do so it right there. because of that, he's always been a frugal-minded person. And so he started his own real estate development company and, and uh, you know, saved up and and doing, you know, fairly good for himself. So, I, I mean, I, I, I'm blessed that he listened. He's a very sharp kid. And, and, and now, because he has a daughter, he told me just a, uh, about a few months ago when he decided to kind of give up. He's had some opportunities going to coach it if he wants to, but he doesn't want to do that because he said that I, I, I remember. And this touched me the most. He said that I sat back and seen the father you were to me. Because I gave up Canadian football. I could have went back to Canadian Football League and played probably another three or four years there. But I decided to give it up and, and to come back and be a T-ball coach for my own son. And he said, I now understand why you did what you did for me. And because of it, I'm much appreciative because I'm willing to do the same thing for my daughter. And now he's back trying to uh, build and, and, and pour in his, uh, the life of his daughter who's deciding to be a, 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 a softball and basketball player at a very young age. So I, I can respect the father and the man that he's become. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I just, you know, Tony, you know how it is. I just, I just get proud of my kids that they're out there trying to do positive things and, and uh, do, following my footsteps, the good stuff. That's it. That's it. I mean, that's, that's, that's keeping it real. You know, Charles, we're going to jump ship a little bit, you know. Uh, I know you've, you've done a lot, you know, with the Titans, you know, the Titans organization. That's why I got a chance to meet you, you know, having my Bombers organization. And, uh, you know, you give me a chance to go do some good things and play against Dion and Sanders and, you know, some of the top teams. But, you know, you stuck with it. Even though you're not coaching, you know, the Titans no more, but you're stuck in it. You're with the FEU right now. You know, so what is the FEU for the listeners that don't know? And, you know, and, you know, I know camp season and all that stuff going on. So what is the benefit for a young person to go to an FEU camp? Well, here's the deal. Obviously, uh, for for number one, I always think you got to go to a camp because the, the sooner you can figure out, and, and the younger, whether it be Texas, Oklahoma, wherever, you got to get FBU provides a platform. Number one of, of, I think, coaches who have been in the game. These aren't guys who maybe write about it or talk about it. These are coaches who played it, uh, or coaches who've coached it on every level, college and professional. So you're getting a realistic view of what it takes to get and play at the highest level. Uh, so FBU provides that. And I've always been, for me, uh, the first camp I went to had Andre Risen and a couple other guys, Chris Miller, with my oldest son. And I was, it was the realest camp, Tony, that talked real. And so they, 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 they created an atmosphere with FBU where it's from the classroom to the field, back to the classroom. And you know, to be successful in football, it's not just what you practice on the field with. It's how you study and get yourself prepared and watching the film and getting the IQ stuff down that it takes to be successful. Because everybody, when you get to be college and pro, the athletic window is not that far apart. Now it's just about the preparation. And so that's one thing that FBU provides. Another thing they do for these athletes, they have these Army all you, you guys are both familiar with the Army All-American game. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, F, FBU is the, is the engine behind that. So the AAG, what they call the Army All-American Game, and FBU are kind of one and the same. So when you go to FBU camps, it puts you in line to be recognized for those guys who ultimately make decisions to choose those guys later down the road that are guys I want to play in that Army All-American Game. So there's some, and there's some other freshman East Bay games that they have. Unfortunately, Oklahoma, we're not allowed to participate in all that because our association doesn't want us to. So we're left behind on some of those aspects of it. But when it comes to the, the, the seniors and the Army All-American game, FBU, uh, as you go along with that spectrum, it gets you more in, 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 in the, once again, branding that name where people, when now your high school film comes across, they've seen you for several years in their camp. Now they say, yeah, I like that guy. Let's invite it to our game. That's good stuff. 
Big E, you got any other thing for, for, for CT? Uh, I mean, just jumping back at your, uh, with your time at, uh, Oh, you, uh, you know, what are some, what are some memorable, mo- memorable moments and like, what are some, you know, who are some people at a, in Norman that made a big impact on your life? Hey, let's put on some of your well, video. Play a little video. Um, yeah, let's I, put some of your video. We're going to put some of your video up, CT, when you used to play it back in the day. So when you go back and watch the show, okay. you can see, everybody can see the CT, baby. Uh, well, listen, I, I, I can tell you my, one of the most memorable moments for me obviously was, uh, the game of the century two, they tapped it in was, you know, we, I was a redshirt freshman, Jamel Holloway gets hurt, uh, guys. And, you know, we were ranked number one all year, uh, been undefeated. Jamel gets hurt. I make my first start against Missouri at home and we were projected to beat them, uh, by 50 points. And it was my first start and we barely won 17 to 14. So it was a nail biter game. And, so because we barely won and we were going to go on the road the next week to play Nebraska for the right to play for the national championship that year at a one versus two, they flipped us from one to two and moved Nebraska to one because we still won. But because now not only did we barely win, but Charles Thompson, no one felt they could get it done. And that that whole week of practice, that whole game uh, he is probably my best memorable moment uh, going into Lincoln and coming out that day. Uh, with with the Sooners earning a Big Eight championship at the time, and a right to go play for the national championship against the Miami Hurricanes down in the Orange Bowl, yeah. probably for me my biggest day uh, and and the one I remember and I cherish the most as a Sooner football player was that day in Lincoln, Nebraska, when we were able to go in there and shock them and, and shock the nation seventeen to seven and win that game. So that's probably for me the biggest moment. I'll tell you one of the biggest times that I had really was at practice. At practice, my freshman year, we were ranked number one in defense. And I was a red shirt. Not a red shirt freshman, but a red shirt. In other words, I wasn't playing. I spent a whole year practicing against Dante Jones, Brian Bosworth, Ricky Dixon. All these guys ended up going high in the draft. And I used to tell people this. I hated practice. Can you imagine, Tony, going up in practice? I'm going up against some of the baddest dudes in college football. And they are bad dudes, and they are allowed to hit you because when yeah. you're red shirt, you yeah. can get hit. You're not protected. <laughs> and I and I got this young freshman line. I'm getting my tail tore up every practice. And I told people this true story. When I got to play in the games, they were ten times easier than what I had went through the whole year of practice. It's made it's made you ten times better player though going against that top notch right. defense oh, yeah, though. Sure. You know, I mean, that's right. That's, and that's, right. That's, that's thing about it though. You know. You, you know, what was your relationship like with you and Jamel? Because, you know, you both was highly recruited, both great option quarterbacks, man. I'm just telling you, man, I mean, uh, it, it's what? weird to see that many, good, you know, two great option quarterbacks on the same team at that young age. And, you know, Jamel, and the funny thing about it, C2, you know, Jamel, you know, was a man at OU. You know, you ended up leaving OU. But everybody loves Charles Thompson in the state of Oklahoma. Everybody loves Charles Thompson. And you really don't hear well, no one talk well, about Jamel Holloway. Well, uh, Jamel, this is, I- I'll tell you this, guys. Uh, Jamel took me under his wings when I was there. Um, you know, uh, he we we actually became roommates, uh, to be quite honest with you. Um, and uh, I mean, he's a guy that uh, I-, I can tell you this: very, very smart in terms of running the option, could run it in his sleep. I mean, just go flat out run it. And he he did, Tony. He pushed me to be better because it's funny. I always thought that I was a better athlete than Jamel. Mm-hmm. I could outrun him backwards. But when it came to running that option and that wishbone, he just turned into gold when he got on that center, man. I mean, and so I I got to get a front row seat, being in meetings, being in practice, and watching this guy. And he 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 pushed me to be better, more than just an athlete. He was the beginning process of teaching me that there's more to this than just the physical part. You got to be able to think it because he could think it as good as anyone. And to this day, he and I are still friends. We do. On occasion, some camps together around Oklahoma. He actually lives in Oklahoma now. Okay, so he okay. lives in the Macau, Chautauqua area. So we occasionally, he does some camps for the Indian tribes in the casinos, and I occasionally have helped him with him the last couple of years. So we have a still a very, very good relationship. And, uh, you know, he, he was he was pretty ill sick, Tony, about a year ago. He was in the hospital, and I had to go up to, uh, uh, I can't remember if it was Baptist. I think it was Baptist Hospital. And see him in the room, and he was on kind of a life support deal for a little while. Man. Uh, it kind of touched me a little bit because here's a guy who, as a as a young high school kid, I thought he was the greatest thing since sliced bread. 
to be able to come into Norman as a true freshman and guide them guys to the national championship. And I know, trust me, and I even went going through that, I knew how difficult that was. And so I've always, I've always respected him for that. I've already respected him for how he took me in. We didn't have to. Here I was a guy trying to take his position. Mm-hmm. And so, I, I mean, we, we maintain our friendship throughout the year. That's good stuff. So, like, so before we wrap this up, who was the main person that kind of kept their finger on you that you, to this day that you can call and pick up the phone and say, hey, I need you? That, you know, that was that, you know, because, you know, when you go to college, you get that brotherhood, guys that you keep up with, man. I mean, granted, you might not have played 20, 30, 40 years. You ain't played, but you still got the one guy that you can pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I need some help. I need, I need, I need this. I need to, I need to move. I need the kids move. Who, who is the one guy that you, that still has your back to this day? I got two. And I'll tell you, it's, I mean, believe it or not, Coach Barry Switzer. I knew that. I knew that was been, one of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, listen, I, I love the man to death. He has been there for me. You know, it's not something that I sit I sit around and boast about, but this guy has done so much for me. You know, uh, I, I, and I, I mean, I, I literally love the man as if he's fought. he was my father figure there. And you know, the biggest disappointment for me was that I disappointed him when I got in trouble at Oklahoma because this guy truly loved his players cared about his players and I know that he cared about me and he still does to this day so he's number one and then another coach that I had there uh, coach Jim Donnan who ended up leaving Oklahoma and became ultimately the head coach at Marshall and Georgia uh, he's another one that has called and helped my kid. like he he got Urban Meyer I'm sitting there with him he was his his son was playing with Kendall his grandson was playing with Kendall at sophomore we're in there in the, I hadn't seen him in five six seven years been since oh, he picks up the phone First time around, and he sees Kendall playing in the spring game. He calls Ever Meyer right at, right in the bleachers. We're sitting at a freaking a spring a spring practice spring game, and that's how I sent Kendall to Florida. And Urban Meyer, he's been a guy that's been a great resource for me and has looked out for me. And so I would say my time in Oklahoma, it would be uh, Coach Switzer and Coach Jim Donna, who who are guys that I could call on today, and I know that would uh, would be there for me. Well, CT man, that's some good stuff, yeah. man. I know. People is going to love to come back and watch this podcast show, man. You Absolutely. know, having having one of the greatest guys. You know, I mean, like what you do for youth football, high school football. You know, what you doing for FBU, man, and just the way you go out and speak, man. I mean, I can sit and listen to you all day. Most people kind of put me to sleep, but I'm just telling you right now, it's 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 going to be a great podcast that we put on, and you know, when we play this back on on Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon when we get it out. Uh, people's gonna want to listen to it because everything that you said is you just kept it one hundred. You know, it, it's it's all about well, hey, it's about your kids, and it's about the it's about the it's about teaching kids, and, and that's what people need to know. You know, I mean, well, you know, well, Tony, and here's here's what drives me, and this is you know, it's the last thing I'll say to you guys. Years ago, I, listen, I know what Coach Switzer means to me. I know what Coach Switzer means to a lot of guys. Marcus Dupree, uh, Damon Stale. Spencer Tillman, Jamel Holloway. The, I, the list goes on of guys that, who would run through a brick wall for him. I know and I knew that I could never be the coach of the University of Oklahoma to have that kind of impact. So what drove me to do what I did at Woodson was Coach Switzer. Guys like that who made a difference in my life, I felt moved and driven to be able to do that. So I could never be that. But what I can be is, is to leave a legacy there at Woodson Park, there in the city of Oklahoma City, there are a lot of families uh, that have come to that park, including some like yours and mine, and to Charlie Kolars, to the to the to the to Gerald McCoys, to the Dominique Franks, keep going on and on, to Jimmy Flanders. That's what I do, and why I do what I do is because I want to try to leave a legacy. Because at some point, we're all going to leave here. It's yeah. what we leave behind that's going to matter most. Yes, sir. Yeah. Let's keep it one hundred. I got one more question before we go. We just got done watching a little bit of your highlights. You had this little signature move every time you ran the ball into the end zone. You just kind of pumped the ball the in there. Pumped so, the ball. That's yeah. it. Well, how did that come about? Is there a little story behind that, or is it just instinct? Well, it, it, here's what it came from. You guys were – this going to be fun of you. So you remember during that same time, Barry Sanders was around. Yes, yep. sir. And if you ever watched Barry Sanders play, he doesn't do much. He just flips it back. Well, I, I couldn't just flip it back, so I had to add something. So it came with the pop and then the flip, and that was all my celebration was. It because I respected the fact that Barry Sanders could do this unbelievable thing and just get to his zone and act like it was not a Like, here's the ball. I'm off of my deal. So I added the, I added the pump, 
and then the flick back, and that's all mine was. That's it. That's it. We love it. We all love right. it, CT. But CT, I appreciate you coming on, keeping it 100 Oklahoma High School Sports, and joining me and Biggie on this Wednesday afternoon, taking time out of what you got going. I know you're a busy man, but man, just to get on here and talk and and, and cut up and having fun, and man, I'm just telling you right now, I'm tickled, man. I can't wait back. Yeah. Can't wait to go back and watch it and and listen to it, man. It, it's been a great show, man. I think one of one of the the best people we've had on, you know, and we've done over 100 shows, but just to have you on, man, I, I'm, I'm tickled, man. I really am. Yeah. Well, well, appreciate you guys, and, and you guys keep doing what you're doing. And always, E and uh, uh, Tony, keep it 100, man. Thank you, oh, sir. We appreciate that. We appreciate that, right. ZT. You have a great afternoon, the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, guys. All right, bye-bye. Well, folks, that's Charles Thompson, man. I mean, wow. not not no, not not everybody can go go get CT on their podcast, <laughs> but me and Big yeah. E can, and that's what we do here. We get people that you can't get to come on and talk, <laughs> folks. I mean, I'm telling you about it, man. The guy he got in trouble though. You he talked about it. Most people would have shut the put that under the rug and not want to talk about it, right, Big E? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it happened years ago. His boys, you know, was at OU. He transferred out. He says one of the hardest feelings it, it, it took to see his son leave. His other sons at Texas, his, his arch rival that he played against, you know, when he was at, at, at OU. But to have the guy come on the show and, and tell you what, what's going on in his life and how he's changed his life. And I'm telling you, I got a chance to know CT personally because I did a lot of stuff with well, Little League football, you know, the classes, the tie was a tournament that he, he put on, and I have a yeah. chance to win it a couple of times, man. And, and some of the kids he's coached, he's kind of like me. He's coached. He could have went on and on and on. We could have been on this show at 6 o'clock tonight, folks, talking about the kids he's coaching, the kids he's put in college, and then what he's doing now with FBU, you know, and, and, and if you need to get married, he can marry you too. I mean, CT got he got all <laughs> kind of tricks of the trades so he can do. But, E, man, I mean, I know, like I said, you're 19 years old, baby. I didn't know you was that young, man. You really shocked me. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm still pretty young, so you know. But I mean, you get to talk to a legend like that. I mean, how does oh, it man. make you? Feel? Oh man, it's it was absolutely just cr- and like kind of mind blowing. You know, I mean, I'm a huge Sooner football fan, and he's just a legend. You know, uh, one of the last QBs. I mean, you had him and Jamel Holloway to run the option under Barry Switzer at OU. You know, uh, he kind of got away from that system after those two. But yeah. um, you know, that's just it's a part of. Sooner history and it's uh, it's just it's incredible. We got I get to go. Yeah, yeah, I get to yeah, go yeah. home and tell my yeah, mom yeah, like, hey, I yeah. talked to Charles Thompson on the podcast today, yeah, and my and, mom's gonna be like, what? And, and, and that's some good stuff though, man. Yeah. Like Big E. But folks, you know, like so we're, we're gonna wrap this up here in a second. But I tell you, man, high school football is jumping off. We're oh, getting yeah. guys getting starting to get offers, man. Got to give it up to one of the guys that's been on our show, Big Alton. He got his first offer. Yeah, got offer. an offer from uh, – I don't think it's his first offer. He's gotten a few. Oh, yeah, but I'm talking about it's a good big offer. I mean, oh, yeah, Emporia State. It's, like it's, yeah. a, big, it's a good school, man. Yeah. We got Jaden Poole, one of the kids that uh, yeah. that played for me is up there, man. It's a good school, man. So, just to see him doing his thing, man, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm getting tickled. I'll tell you a kid that, man, and, uh, you know, I watched a little bit of Huddle. His highlight is that Jack 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 Smith for Tata. Yeah. Man, this kid, man, I'm man. telling you right now, uh, I know he's playing receiver, but I guarantee you that kid moves the H back. People listen to me because I know what I'm talking about a little bit. I know I'm not a coach, <laughs> but if that kid moves the H back, he's going to get a ton of offers because I'm telling you, uh, playing. I mean, the kid made some great catches. I got to, I think his mom put something on 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 Facebook or his huddle or something. I kind of went through it, folks. I I creep. I like I like seeing these young men is doing good things, man. Uh, he's a, might be a young man we need to have on the show because I really like that kid, man. And he's an amazing he, kid. He is. Amazing. He's a good kid, man. And I'll yeah. tell you, he's a he's a he's one of those receivers. This is a sleeper, folks. I mean, he's a sleeper. But I'm just telling you, man, you keep eye on him because he's gonna get to, he's gonna get a big offer. He's gonna get a D one offer. I know I say that a lot because I like every kid to get a D one <laughs> offer. The only reason I say that, folks, because I want their school to get paid for. It. Because if you D two, all your school don't get paid for you on his own. When we we had coach on here. They only get what thirty eight scholarships. That yep. means if you got one hundred and twenty kids, every kid ain't getting you know getting their money paid for their school paid for. So, but you know, uh, young men is going to camps. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep taking care of business. Uh, you know, I mean, it's starting to get hot now, man. You're starting to see these kids get get these offers, man. I tell you, Carl Albert, man, they're going to be another team. I got to watch something. Read the Quazies, uh huddle. Uh, this morning, his 707, and I'm telling you, man, the kid looks, woo-wee! He looks pretty <laughs> damn good, you know. And, yeah. uh, you know, for a kid that couldn't throw the football, man, he's slinging the ball around, man. Uh, I got a chance to watch it this morning. It was sent to me, and I'm just telling you, man, the kid, I'm telling you, he's going to blow up. I'm just going to tell you, man, that bomb is going to blow up over there at Carl Albert with that kid. The kid is going to be, I'm telling you right now, you heard it first on Keeping It 100. Put our logo back up, baby. We love you, CT, <laughs> but we got to get you off our off our screen. I'm telling you right now, keep it at 100 Oklahoma high school sports. The kid is going to be 5A. Listen to me, E, 5A player of the year. 
I'm telling you right now. I know he got his buddy so. in the backfield. He's going to be the 5A player of the year. The kid can – if he's throwing the ball like he was throwing it in that in that 7-on-7, seven seven, and then we already know the kid can run, and the kid is big. I mean, I don't know what he's on. Them Flintstone vitamins is looking <laughs> good. I'm just telling you, the kid looks yeah. good. And he's putting the work in to get better as a QB. Yeah. And you think, you got all summer, and now you're on a Coach Don that's one of the biggest hype mans in, 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 on Twitter and social media. I'm telling you right now, yeah. if, you, if you're looking for your kid to get recruited, have Coach Don, you know, uh, get out there and tweet your name out there. Man. Congratulations to the Cedric kid, man. Like I said, the kid hasn't – I don't think he started a high school game yet. I know he got hurt a little bit yeah, last year, but he went and took care of business. Like it's like you heard CT market yourself, market yourself, market yourself, market yourself. That's how you get recruited. Like him, yeah. the guy was. You know, it's funny because I mean, I've talked to CT. We never really talked about his recruiting background, but when you got the king that can come up, pull up in the limo at your high school <laughs> and, and walk to the cafeteria and say, "Tell CT to sign with Charles Thompson." You know, signed with the University of Oklahoma. That's big time. And you already got a big man on the campus with Jamel Holloway and whoever else they had on campus. Then to, to play with the Bosworth and play with, you know, some of the guys that he played with man, is just amazing. Though. Keith Jackson, you know, uh, you know, one of the best tight ends that probably ever came to the University of Oklahoma. But, folks, I'm just tickled to have the guy on the show, man. I'm yeah. still grinning ear to ear, man. Big E, you got anything to say before we wrap this up? Oh, uh, man, I just I appreciate everybody tuning in, uh, you know, uh, we're around 100 subscribers, so thank you to all the guys. That we need more. We need more. We need to pump this up, man. We need, yeah. to, we need to pump, keep it 100. Folks, there's nobody else doing what we're doing out here. So why <laughs> hate on us, man? We're talking good stuff about kids. We're not here hating on kids. We're talking good stuff about kids. Describe to the show, man. Give us feedback. Talk to us about the show, man. Absolutely. We're doing big things. There's not another Vibe, uh, uh, Zone or whoever else sports thing out there doing what we're doing. We're out here still in the summer. We might have a week off, but we're going to come back. Man, I had a guy call me last week, uh, Brian Miller. His daughter is over. She's a softball player over there. She wants to come on the show. Uh, 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 Proctor that used to be the old defensive coordinator. I'll have him on the show here. But we got people lined up to come on the show, man. And and, and these ain't little bitty names. These are big names, though. You know what I mean? I want to have a girl golfer on the show. So what we doing, we just trying to pub this show more and more and more. And football is right around the corner. So we're going to start getting these kids that's getting recruited Getting the names, getting fixing the sign. I like I said, I'm proud of big, big, big country. Alton's getting his, you know, not like I said, it's not his first, but getting the Empire Emporia State is a is a big time offer to me. Yeah. And guess what? He's gonna get something big, big besides yeah. that though. But like you heard, you heard me say it first. Keep it what? Keep it 100. The crazy will win five A player of the year. You heard it first. So keep it 100. <laughs> yeah. Oklahoma High School sports. And he's just, you know, he's just a freak athlete. I mean, he really, is, he man. play he plays basketball. Uh -oh. He's kind of built like a wrestler. I was like, that, that kid oh, could kid probably. Wrestler? Yeah, he wrestled before. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just telling you, man, I, when I saw that, when I saw him throwing a ball today, I was like, woo-wee. I mean, oh, I know Coach John over there just, woo. -wee. <laughs> <laughs> over yeah. And then they got another kid that moved into a big old, woo. -wee. I'm telling you, man, Carl yeah. Albert don't fall off. They just keep going. Right. Amy Russell, you heard me. Carl Albert, you heard me say it. Carl Albert just keeps going and going. They're kind of like the energy. Or what? The Energizer Bunny. bunny. They, Keep they going and going and going. <laughs> well, folks, thank you for yep. joining another great show of Keeping It 100. Oklahoma High School, what? Oklahoma High School Sports. We'll see you next time.